The scripture reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. I love this one. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received, or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Today's um, scripture for the sermon is Psalm 100. Psalm 100, which is the entire chapter, 1 through 5. Psalm 100, verse 1 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Before we get into the sermon, I would like to play a video and then we'll get into the sermon. Just a cup of coffee, please. Coming right up. Oh, there's no charge. Thank you. Here you go. Thanks again. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your support. Can I take a picture? Sure. All right. Smile. There you go. Sir, my son would like to ask you a question. Are you a hero too? said you were. I just served as best I could. Can we take a picture? Sure. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your support. Can I get 
get you a refill. videos it's great i would like to appreciate recognize and honor all the veterans who have served our nation happy veterans day belated happy veterans day and first all who have served in the defense forces of any trade please stand we would like to recognize you We have a small for you guys. For you. Our kids uh, on Wednesday night have made some beautiful cards for you guys. Thank you for your service. Tim. Oh, you. Thank you for your service. One more. Thank you for your service. One more? I have one more. Who's it? John? <laughs> okay. Secondly, um, we often forget all the family members, your uncle, aunt, who have served in the past in the military. I would also like to recognize all the family members, if your aunt or uncle, brother, friend, uh, close, like, yeah, anybody who have served in the military or any trade of defense forces, please stand. I would also like to recognize and appreciate your, your time, your sacrifice from your, your loved one that often we forget. Uh, if your family member have gone to military or somewhere else to the defense forces, you have given up your love time with them. So I would like to also appreciate and honor you guys. <laughs> we give thanks and appreciation to all have served. Your significant commitment to the nation matters a lot. We give also thanks to the Lord, our God, for your life, your gift that he has given you, the bravery, the wisdom, and the opportunity to go and serve. I, I, I was looking at the, the sermon title for today, Give Thanks. Give Thanks. I want to have a disclaimer. This is not a Thanksgiving service. <laughs> we are in a series of uh, series that we are doing for four weeks. Sorry, four weeks. Yes, uh, it's called the Examine. It's a, a style of prayer that uh, Saint Ignatius of Loyola has presented. Uh, it has been a wonderful prayer uh, practiced in the Christian history. Last week, we looked at the first step in the examine, that ask God for light. From Mark chapter 10, Bartimaeus gets his vision through Jesus' grace and love and mercy. I want to look at my day with God's eyes. That's a theme that looking at every day, every activity through the eyes of God. Now... We are in the second part of prayer, second step. Give thanks. Give thanks. The day I have just lived today, every day, is a gift from God. So let us be grateful for it. Be grateful for the day, the gift that God has given us. We all give thanks on various occasions. Uh, particularly on Thanksgiving, we give thanks to the Lord for all his blessings. And the uh, first time I ever 
sat for a Thanksgiving dinner, a lunch slash dinner. So I sat down with all my friends from church, and uh, my pastor said, like, let's give thanks. And, uh, okay, he asked every person to give thanks for something right at the table or maybe something that happened in their life. I, I noticed uh, a small kid, uh, he started praying. He said, Lord, I give thanks for the turkey. <laughs> Lord, I give thanks for the stuffing. And he looked at it and said, oh, there is green bean casserole. Lord, I give you thanks for that. He, I, that struck me a lot. Interesting that he gave thanks to small things that was at the table. And sometimes there are certain things that we forget in life to give thanks to the Lord. When we say a prayer and the Lord answers it, I'll confess, I forget to say thanks to the Lord in some instances. But giving thanks to the Lord brings us and draws us closer to Him. And we often say, thank you, Lord. And in our day-to-day -day life, we would say thanks to others, saying, thanks, buddy. Thanks, brother. Thank you, mom. If you go to a, a restaurant, thank you, cashier. Thank you, diner. So we give thanks in multiple places. It's a sense of gratitude, a recognition. Giving thanks is an excellent thing. And I love that respect and culture here in America. Now in the second step, as we see give thanks in the, in the sense of prayer, giving thanks is a sense of prayer in Christian history. The day I have just lived is a gift from God. It's a sense of giving thanks to the Lord, recognizing where God is and who God is in our lives. What's much more awesome is giving thanks to God. Often we hear this phrase, thank God, repeatedly around us. Uh, when you escape a major accident in your, in your daily life, you say, thank God, I'm safe. Praise God, I'm safe. I'm blessed with a baby, thank you, Lord. Saying, Lord, I came out of a cancer. Thank you, Lord. In various instances, small to big things, we give thanks to the Lord. That's a sense of prayer. This is something that we ought to do, we are invited to do as believers. You're not really thankful, then we ought to be thankful in our day-to-day -day life, if you're not. And today, the sermon is from Psalm 100. It's a, it's a powerful, small chapter, Psalm 100. Very significant. This psalm of, is also called as Thanksgiving worship. That we, we ought to take this and applied in our lives, giving thanks to the Lord. The psalmist have a unique structure, if we see it here, the structure giving praise, instruction, praise, instruction. Verse 1 and 2, we see the praise, and 3, we see the instruction, and praise again in verse 4, and instruction in verse, verse 5. Let's see verse 1 and 2 here. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. How many of you have gone to a Con Huskers game? <laughs> Almost everybody. First time I've ever gone to a game, one thing like, when do, I asked my friend, when do I shout? <laughs> you see that green, like I, I've gone to a Baylor game. You see that green color shirt, guys? When they make it to the other side, and you, when they put the ball, they run with the ball on the other side, you say, woohoo! <laughs> you shout loud. And I'll tell you, I, f I felt that goosebumps when I didn't even know the, the players. I didn't even know 
what's going on, what's the procedure, or what's the instructions of the game, or whatever it is. I really didn't know, but I felt the vibe and the joy of the touchdown. You were watching Nebraska game last week. Uh, the first time I was watching the, the game with Ryan and other friends. And they made the touchdown like, yes! Now see the excitement when you feel there is an end that come to a fruition. Almost everybody have some sort of excitement in our lives. That, that makes us feel joyful. Closer to, you're not part of the, the team, but you belong to that team. You, you, that's a joy that comes to you when you look towards the fruition. In verse 1, shout for joy to the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Shout, make a joyful noise. All the earth, all you land. Here the psalmist is saying, when you come in the presence of the Lord, shout for joy. Enjoy the presence. And I'll tell you, we are not charismatic or Pentecostal, but oftentimes when we hear the worship song, when we hear something, that the word that comes from the Lord, we feel that goosebumps, isn't it? We feel that emotion in us. That comes from the Lord, the joy. Without knowing us, we clap our hands or we raise our hands. We feel connected to the presence of the Lord. The word uh, all the earth, eres in Hebrew, E-R-E-S, not E-R-A-S, the Taylor Swift's, Swift's big show that's going on. Yes, of course, in E-R-A-S, they shout with joy, seeing and hearing happy song from Taylor Swift. It's a journey of her, but in our journey with God, giving thanks to him, we praise with shout and joy. In our life, we come before him every day with thanksgiving, giving thanks to him. That's, there's a beauty to come before God with giving thanks. All of humanity is called. God is inviting all of humanity to come before him, to worship him. It's an invitation that's open for everybody. The people of Yahweh, people of Israel were inviting to worship the Lord Yahweh. The maker, the creator of all creation is inviting each and every one to give thanks to him, to praise him. The psalmist is inviting you and me today to be united in the human race to praise and worship the Lord. In verse 2, we see, worship the Lord with gladness. In other translations, we also see, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Serve the Lord with gladness and singing. See, there's this huge sense of significance that the Lord is inviting us to sing praise, give thanks to him, come before him. As you come to the Lord, not just as church, every day in our life, we give thanks to him from small things. And I was uh, thinking about this sermon, one of the things that I meant to give thanks. It may sound silly for some of you guys, I, I would give thanks to the Lord for my toilet. I would give thanks to the Lord for the house, the trees, the grass, the beautiful weather. I know it's going to go colder. But still I give thanks to the Lord. And everything we, we, we ought to give thanks to the Lord because he deserves it. Because he is the creator and sustainer of all things. The shirt that you wear, the ring, the tablet, ultimately the Bible, the word of God. We give thanks and praise to him. Tell me something that you haven't given thanks to the Lord. Any one of you, please. Family. I want to hear something silly. Shoes. Yes. Great. A friend of mine told about her shoes. 
two things in your life you spend most of your entire life. Guess what? Number one, your bed. You get a good mattress. Number two, shoes, which you stand on it almost entire day. You wear it. Yes, giving thanks to the shoes. See, there are many things that we often forget because God is the sustainer. He provides us even to buy his shoes. You may ask me, okay, pastor, sometimes I come to the Lord with worry, anxiety, frustration. How do I give thanks to the Lord in that, in that time? That's an excellent question. How can I worship the Lord with gladness and joy songs when I'm going through struggles and, or maybe turmoil in my life? Your presence before God is an act of obedience. When you come before God, you see his presence, you experience his presence. And then you acknowledge it, that he's there with you. That he is God in an act of worship, surrender, obedience. In verse 3 we see, know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. When you come before him, you recognize that he is a creator and the sustainer, not just for you, for the entire world. He is God. The Lord is God. Acknowledge that. Acknowledge that. Who made you, who you belong to in your life. Who provides for you, who, who has provided for you. Give thanks for that. The moment you acknowledge that he is your creator, he is your sustainer, he is your God, he is your shepherd, you will see that joy that plums in you, that flourishes in you like a well of water. And then you will give him thanks and praise. He got you back when you come before him. You feel that you got a touchdown, like how when Nebraska makes a touchdown. You feel that joy, acknowledging he is God, he is with you. You'll be glad and be thankful. In verse 4, we see, enter his gates with, with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Enter his gates or courts uh, represents like entering his presence. Gates and courts describe in that context, in this context, the temple or tabernacle where people come before him one step at a time to the holiest of the holiest place. How do we relate it today? We enter his presence. We enter his presence with, you know, most of you guys have a password for your phone or maybe your house, a key code. Entering to God, the password to enter is give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord. Thanking him, praising him. You know, two things that happens when you come before him giving thanks. One, it transforms you. Two, Giving thanks to the Lord helps you to experience and acknowledge He is there with you. It transforms you. How? God reminds you that you have His unconditional love when you give thanks, when you come before Him. God doesn't expect you to say, thank you. However, saying so shows your humility, your presence before Him. Giving thanks transforms you in such a way that you will walk obediently in his presence, which contributes to godly living. You know, every day, give, constantly giving thanks to the Lord for small to big things, you know, it reminds you God is with you in each and everything. It transforms you internally, knowing that he is with you in each and every small things of your day-to-day -day activities. It transforms you. It helps you to experience that he is with you. When you know that he worked in your life, you give praise to him, give thanks to him. That change 
changes your internal heart and also changes your life and people around you. And you unknowingly would say, man, I, I will give thanks to the Lord because he has done this. You're testifying about God to others. You become a witness of God to others. Finally, in verse 5, we see, For the Lord is good and love endures forever. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That's a promise. What a promise. Paul, in his final exhortation in Philippians 4, 4-9, he gives, Rejoice in the Lord. I will always, I will say it again, rejoice. Every situation. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And peace of God, which transcends, surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Give thanks to Jesus Christ for his sacrifice, for being a savior to each and every one of us. Dear brothers and sisters, let us all give thanks to the Lord, the giver, the sustainer of all things, because he deserves it. He deserves a gratitude. Without a heart of giving thanks, we become arrogant and self-centered. Finally, the application. In everything, give thanks to the Lord. In prayer, take your time and give thanks. Like you looked at the previous, as God opens your eyes to see all the things, give thanks to each and everything. Small things to larger things. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from Father in lights. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for God will, God's will for you in Jesus Christ. In everything give thanks. They examine the prayer that we are looking at. Opening your eyes. And now today, we give thanks. This week, I invite you. Take your time, maybe five minutes or maybe as you drive, any time. Look around and say thanks to the Lord. That will transform you. That will change the way you look at the world. You might be giving thanks. Do it more. And you will we'll see how God works in you and outside you. We give thanks to this nation, this church, this service. I give thanks to each and every one of you. He works in you and he is testifying to me. And I give praise and thanks to him. When my friend said about Thanksgiving, what my friend said about Thanksgiving is, you know, Families come together and we give thanks, not just for the food, but for everything that God has provided us. It also reminds us the first fruit that we bear, that we get as we give to the Lord. It's a sense of thanksgiving to the Lord. Lord, I thank you for this provision and I'm giving you the first portion to you because you are the first in my life. In everything in our life, we ought to give thanks to the Lord because he has provided each and everything for us. Right from our life, our children, our family, our jobs, everything. The baby, it's a gift. It's a grace that God shows us. Let us all give thanks to that. Praise God. Would you pray with me? Lord, we give thanks to you. We praise you, O Lord. We shout loud and thank you for all the grace and love you pour on us. Lord, we 
thank you for our veterans. We thank you for all the soldiers who are out there serving. Lord, we thank you for our provision, our daily bread, the word of God. We thank you. The word thank you is not enough, but Lord, we come and surrender our, our hearts as a thank you to you because you are God. You are a faithful and loving God. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. May the peace and love and his kind grace be upon you. His face shine upon you. His love be with you. Go in peace. Amen.